Did graphene just break a fundamental law of physics? This is what the headline said. Let's have a look. Before we talk about graphene, a big thank you to all my supporters, especially those of you in Patreon tiers 4 and higher. Without your help, I wouldn't be able to bring science news to you. If you want to join the community, you can do so on Patreon or right here on YouTube. But now let's talk about graphene. Graphene is a sort of miracle material that scientists have studied intensively since its discovery 20 years ago. It's made of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb pattern, like a sheet of chicken wire basically, but just one atom thick. Despite being amazingly light and flexible, graphene is exceptionally strong and conducts electricity and heat better than most other materials. Its discovery won an Nobel Prize in 2010, and it's been said to give us everything from faster electronics to better batteries and advanced sensors. Graphene has been the future of technology for two decades now, so at this point it's starting to look like German airport construction. I think it's fair to say it's been somewhat overhyped. But what's new? Well, according to the new press release, not only did graphene break a fundamental law, the researchers have also for the first time observed electrons in graphene behaving like a nearly perfect quantum fluid. This, the press release says, makes graphene an ideal low-cost platform for investigating concepts from high-energy physics and astrophysics, such as black hole thermodynamics and entanglement entropy scaling. Well, wow. That sounds impressive. But what did they actually do? The headlines are about a team from the Indian Institute of Science who just published a new paper in Nature Physics. They report that they measured how charge and heat move in ultra-clean graphene and found a huge mismatch with what metals usually do. In normal metals, the conductivity and the heat transfer follow a relation known as the wiedemann franz law. This is because normally the electrons carry both electric charge and heat, so the ratio of thermal conductivity to electrical conductivity is proportional to the temperature. However, the electrons in graphene don't behave this way. Rather, they behave like an almost perfect fluid called a Dirac fluid. It has extremely small viscosity, as small as theoretically possible. Loosely speaking, the reason is because the electrons interact more strongly than in ordinary metals. This supposedly fundamental law, therefore, simply isn't fundamental. It's an effective, a derived, approximate relation that works for most metals, and it just doesn't work for graphene. Physicists understand reasonably well why. You simply wouldn't expect this law to even apply. So much about this. How new is it? The brief summary is that it isn't new because it's been measured before. Indeed, it's interesting to look at what they write in the paper as opposed to the press release. In the paper, they write that a material like graphene naturally violates the wiedemann franz law and that several experimental reports on the breakdown of the wiedemann franz law have provided valuable insights into the formation of a Dirac fluid. So what then is new? The new thing is that they have used an extremely clean version of graphene with very few defects that shows this effect particularly strongly. That improves a lot on previous measurements. It's a fine experiment, really, but it doesn't rewrite physics textbooks. What's with the talk about testing black holes? This refers to a type of quantum simulation known as analog gravity. This basically means that small fluctuations in this electron fluid in the graphene behave similar to how the quanta of light behave near black holes, or so we think. It's basically a customizable model. However, to use this simulation, you must assume that the mathematics is the same. You can't use it to demonstrate that they are the same. Also, I've worked on analog gravity for some while, and I can tell you that the maths isn't even all that similar, which is why I don't work on it anymore, because I don't think we'll learn anything from it. In summary, 
I give this paper a one out of ten on the bullshit meter. I think it's a nice experiment. It's not a zero because I'm not qualified to judge on how good their measurements are, and I'd like to see an independent confirmation for this spectacularly large violation of the law. But I give the press release a 10 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. This press release was almost certainly either written by one of the authors of the paper or at least approved by them, which makes this a good example for why I don't trust scientists. Or maybe the real experiment here was how far you can stretch a headline before it snaps. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem solving is a skill you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build up your knowledge and train your problem solving skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.